Lanerl get home to Sturt in the big afternoon here at Brighton Road. Henwood against Frank Spiel. Perfect afternoon for football. Spiel got upset. Only got the ball back as far as Stringer playing his 100th game. Wobbles it to the half forward line. The handball wasn't all that good. It put Hall under pressure. Going in hard, Garten tunnel balled it out. Spill got a handball out, but it was only as far as Hall. Now McDermott. McDermott sends the base to the half forward line. And in defence, the mark is taken back there by number 18. Carl the leader it was who took that mark in defence. Thompson towards half forward. Seabone in the way. Todd Viney not taking his place in the Sturt side. And uh, Craig Tulkey has come into the 20. Marshall gets it to Salisbury. Caught. Good tackle. Strong defence again by the Double Blues. A kick from Delaney to half forward. Beautifully put. Wilmot on the lead. And uh, indeed the pressure is on him today to kick goals. He's been out of touch in the first three matches. Here he is about 60 metres from goal directly in front. Beautiful kicker of the ball. Drop punt. Right to the edge of the square. Henwood. Good mark in defence. So Wilmot not able to make the distance and Henwood will take the pressure off the base for the moment. McDermott runs into the space. Gee, he's got to be checked and checked carefully. Gibbs. Shulky dives at him, but the kick goes to the centre of the ground. Spill should mark. Whoop, fumbled. Tony Hall late on the scene, but the umpire has paid the mark. Much to the disgust of the Bay fans, and uh, Frank Spill is forced to come back to kick over his mark. Spill in the big square, won't make the distance. Off goes the lead out the outer side there of Underwood. He's got the football, might be still too far out to score. Wilmot leads direct. In there was Klopp. Doofy through. The Bay's out of defence. The kick towards centre field taken by Garton. Looking for running Clark. Got it out as far as Stringer. The handball wasn't all that good in. Crash under pressure there was Doofy. Doofy got it there as far as his teammate in Wayne Stringer. Stringer to the half forward line. Garton back in defence for the Blues now is Winter. But the umpire will come in and ball it up on the right half forward flank. Big crowd here at Brighton Road. I would think in the vicinity of eight, 9,000 people. No score on the board in the first three minutes. Garton battling for the base. Umpire will bounce. Umpires today are Ross Campbell and Mark Mackey. Still no score. We've been going for about four or five minutes in this first turn. Beautifully read by Seabone. McDermott close to the line. Stringer on to Garten. Starred last week. Hooks it back to the pocket. Copping. Back it comes to Walsh. Deep in that right forward pocket. The kick from Walsh is across the face of the goal. Super carry from behind. With the goal umpire signalling that it was through for a point. So the first score to the Bays. They're one point. Sturt yet to open their account. Kick in by Tony McCarthy. Which side will he go? He's getting lead from Spiel to Grandstand side. With him is Henwood, one on two there. Henwood at the back of the pack was retarded. Gives the run to Grenvold. Grenvold, half forward line, puts it out for Marshall. He's got to work hard for this. Could lose it. Quickly and now he's painted. The umpire set a high tackle. David Marshall just a little fortunate there. Off goes Carey. Big super at the back of the pack. Craig back in defence. Will need support from there. Lost the footy. Carey. The umpire set a push in the back. And Neil Craig will take the free kick from the back pocket. Craig was selected at half-back flank. Good kick to centre wing. Looking for Spiel. He had front position. Painter takes it out of the air. Now the race is on. Robert Klomp against Seabone. Not uh, overly possessed with pace. The pair of them. It's almost a uh, dead heat then. And finally the ball is out of play. An old one point. Sturt yet to score. Tied opening to this very vital clash here at Brighton Road this afternoon. Henwood got the tap. There's an infringement holding the ball decision. The free's gone to Darrell Smith. He hears away through centre half forward. Wilmot at the back should mark and does. Oh, well put by Smith. And good judgment from Wilmot. And this could be the confidence booster that he was seeking. He's in the square. He can't. I shouldn't say can't, but he shouldn't miss. Ten metres out, a goal. 
One to Wilmot. Sturt, one goal. You know, one point. Something that he needed. He's only booted two goals in the last two league games he's played. And, of course, last year he booted 100. So Sturt are looking for something or from their young champion full forward. And Wilmot has been trying hard, apparently. Just can't seem to crack it at the moment. But that was beautifully put by Daryl Smith and uh, gave it to him on a plate, held ground, and from point-blank range, nods the first score of the for Sturt. Spiel against Henwood. Gee, that's an important clash in the middle. The winner of that will go a long way to putting his side on the road to victory. Walsh was caught. Wayne Stringer. Chance for Sturt. It's Daryl Smith. Clever handball. Underwood it is that goes towards half forward. Always found Martin. Martin's through. Puts one on its way. Always well offline. And one point. So 1-1 one, one the double blues. And uh, Linnell one point. Six minutes gone in this first turn. The kick in by Duthy. No breeze down here at uh, Brighton Road. And the ground in perfect nick. Players obviously welcoming the, the rain during the week. Much softer conditions. Dee Duthie didn't almost kick it out without being touched. Cruz had to work hard. Cleverly touched back there. But Grenvold who comes out with the ball. To Hall. The handball was looking for Maynard. Not good enough. That's a better one from Marshall. Maynard now on the left leg. Goes in towards Cobbing. 35 metres out. The Bay starting to run the ball now. Carey in the square wanting to lead. But his vacant spaces or the open spaces have been cut off. And the ball is with Copping and he's going to shoot for goal. Ball going to edge away with a breeze. I think that probably hit the post. The point only. Glenelg two points. Sturt 1-1. One, one. Wayne Kavanagh appears to have been given the task of mining Copping. That's an awesome prospect. Kavanagh did a good job last week. Henwood from behind, fist clear. Here's a chance. McDermott or goes in short. There's a player loose. Maynard in the pocket. Controls it just inside the line. He's close to the line. Comes back with the reverse screw. But it was too acute and one point. So the base, three points. Sturt 1-1. One, one. Very good opening in this to this very vital game. Agreed, David. And gee, what a confidence uh, kick that was with Maynard. On the run, tried the check side. Most players would try it when they've got a set shot, but on the run, not many of them. Henwood thumped the ball clear from behind. He's got the ball back again, or he got it from Walsh. Back out towards Marshall. He's looking for a free kick. Grenvold under pressure. Henwood now. Walsh grubbers one to the half-forward line. Derrington down. And the umpire's going to give him a free kick for a high tackle. James Derrington. At centre-half back. Edges stood out of defence towards centre wing. Seabone. The back is Hogarth. Henwood got it back to Grenvold. On the boot. Hall. Coming back after injury. Hall now centres the ball towards the half-forward line. Beautifully put. By Mark, taken by Garten. Tony Hall, what a player. Adam Garten playing centre-half forward this afternoon. Is about 40 metres out from goal. Kick underway. He's out on the full. Not the way it ought to be. He'd be disappointed. And the penalty free kick will be taken by McCarthy. Not the way it was in the 85 grand final either because his kicking for goal on that day was immaculate. Garten playing at centre-half forward was a sensation in that spot last Saturday. Gee, Henwood's doing good work. Salisbury got it from McDermott, hooks it back to the square. Watch for Copping in the pack, can't handle this one. Andrew Winter in trouble. Copping taps it out cleverly. Kidney throws himself on the ball, can't get it clear. Empire Mackey will bounce. Graham Studley Corns and again a good start to the season by the Bays. Having been premiers in 85, one may have felt that uh, the early part of this season might have been a difficult part for them, but that's not to be. They played in the Escort Cup Grand Final and were beaten in that, of course, but they've won two out of their three games in the competition to date. This is a vital game for them, though, because Sturt came back strongly last week after two losses. Came back fiercely against West Adelaide in that last quarter, turned a 20-point deficit into a win kidney burrowing in at the bottom of the pack the clever marshal 
cool, Gibbs. Half forward Garten. Whoops, can't hold that one. Gets it over to McDermott, runs himself into trouble, holding the ball. Well, Garten's not happy. Bit of pushing and shoving there, and certainly the Glenelg fans thought that Garten should have been paid that mark there. Yes, uh, well, he, he didn't. And uh, I tend to agree with the umpire. Frost is a long kick. Fine mark over the top. Joffa Martin, centre half forward. Might be just beyond his distance. He's going for home with a long one. Duthie getting back. It's offline in any case. But Duthie takes the easy mark. He's my selection for full back. But I don't think the state selectors will play him there. On the outer side, Underwood. He's 45 metres out. 45 degree angle. Be a good kick to make the distance. He's confident. He's going to have a shot. He's got Wilmot on the square. He's not bothering to lead. Just waiting to see if he gets a leap away, if uh, the ball does drop in short, and it is going to. Big leap spill. I think it's over the back. I think it's a goal. No, the umpire's going to give a free kick for a push in the back. And uh, I didn't see it, but it's Duthie with the ball. Duthie's kick uh, goes to that other side. Alan Stringer up high. Couldn't complete the mark. Opportunity for Delina. Caught. Seabone lost it. Here's a go for Delina now. 35 metres out, but he's hooked it also. In fact, hooked it very wide. Put it out of bounds on the full. Sturt uh, doing well in attack. They look very smart, very crisp in their work. But just at the moment, uh, can't find the, the big goals. Henwood now asking for a lead. Max Cruz gives him one, but when he ignores that, goes for distance. Oh, it's a high kick towards halfback. Spiel had front position and went one-handed. Martin fumbles out of play. 1-1 one, one to three points. 12 minutes gone first quarter. It's a struggle at the moment. Spiel and Henwood. Seabone there, but Spiel got the tap away. Back towards his half forward line. Stringer. Gibbs. Conceding ground. Cruz. Out of the back pocket. Just got his kick in time. Ball and Reed. The bounce will decide. Craig at the back. Made out through. Reed. Bottles the ball up high tackle. He's going to get it centre field. 1-1 one, one to three points as the Blues go into attack again. We're sitting in the Bay stand and they didn't think much of that decision. Understandable. Derrington short, but Reed is going to kick longer up towards the lead now as Spill. Big mark over the top. And the umpire was going to give a free kick to walk in any case, I think. But when Spill marked it, there was no point in doing it. Spill. From about 35 metres out, not the best kick you've ever seen. Ball going to be a little short at the back. Fine mark taken by Gibbs. Gee, he's great in the air, isn't he, Ross Gibbs? Yes, the great Gibbs indeed. Been a tremendous player for the base since coming to them from WA. Kidney had a few anxious moments there, but got a clear to Salisbury. Tigers towards centre wing. Hall's got front spot from behind Reed. Good spoil. Tony Hall looks to be in good form today also, coming back after a, uh, a weak miss to injury. What an Escort Cup series he had. Absolutely brilliant. Garten, all the way up from centre-half forward. Grenvold and that dirty jumper of his. It's almost uh, brown and gold, Rick Keegan tells me, and I think he's right. More like Hawthorne than uh, than old. Bit of work to be done on the jumper. Plenty of work to be done on the ground at the moment. Stringer playing his hundredth. Hogarth in trouble. Not a good handball. Stamped by Grenvold. Or oh, Marshall cleverly out of trouble. Towards half forward. Garten. No pressure put on him on that occasion. Copping calling for it in the pocket. Well put. Oh, he should take that. He has. Lovely pass from Garten. Copping's right on that boundary. Now super on the lead. Can't get there. Galena takes it off hands. He turns cleverly out of trouble and thumps the double blues clear. Ball at centre wing, Stringer against Underwood. Stringer, the experienced one. Underwood has done it well, took a high tackle from Marshall. Players butter up for the ball again. The umpire will come in and bounce. At centre wing, 1-1 one, one to three points in a low-scoring game. Neither side can get clear at the moment. A battle of defences. Spill, Maynard, around the corner. Frost using his body well. The bounce beat Gutt. Here's a chance for Smith to clear, looking for a lead. Clock gave him one, went over that player's head. Coming to meet it and doing it well as Cruz thought about playing on. 
and uh, gee I thought he had I thought he traveled but the umpire said no and Cruz takes it at center half back coming out grandstand side the lead of Garton Smith in front good mark Smith looking to play on off goes walk in the pocket will one as well will mount out in front Doofy goes for the spoil walk looking for support quickly Hogarth now goes over to the other Hogarth Michael goal the first one or the second to Sturt the first to Hogarth 2-1 to three points and both the Hogarths involved in that one Oh yes, and what a great passage of play by uh, by the double blues. It started with Smith on centre wing. Walk, scout it cleverly, and that'll be his job today. They'll try and fist clear of Wilmot. A series of handballs finished with Michael Hogarth, and he's banged through his first, the double blues second. The blues starting to run. The beige yet to kick a goal, 15 minutes in. Spill got up high. Maynard the kick to the half forward line. Well done, Garden used his body. Too strong for Frost. Gart on 50 metres out, not confident, making the distance, kick number four, going in long, is going to be short again, standing up a little bit in the breeze, over the top, oh! oh, the umpire is going to pay a mark, oh, he's paid that mark, gee, he didn't have a lot of grab of that, David. Yeah, I'm not sure whether he did, though, and he indicated as he came in, the umpire, that perhaps somebody was being held, now, how he indicated that, I don't know, because Hall flew from behind, but it did appear that he paid the free. Whatever. Hall from point blank range puts on his first, the Bays. 1-3 to 2-1, great action on Sevens Big League. Yes, a little bit of a question mark about that, uh, whether the mark or the free kick was paid. Well, uh, in any way, it was a goal. And uh, the Bays first, Craig Woodlands prepares to come on. Player off is Henwood. Great game of football here at Brighton Road. Carey from the right, Spill from the left. Kerry giving away a few centimetres and Supers had to learn to spring a bit since they took away the check side rule. Line ball that one. Getting it out was Kidney. Woodlands in the action quickly. Spill. Maynard lost it. Back in there for it again. Daring it over the top. And the umpire not certain at this stage which umpire is uh, ought to be officiating. They were both running in different directions. And finally it was Ross Campbell who came back. Spiel again, thumped further forward by Marshall. Smith back in defence. It was Kavanagh. Smothered. Oh, running down. Gee, he was slaughtered that player. Quickly now on the half forward line. It is Kidney. Grenvold there. The handball goes out. Hogarth back in defence. Now McDermott through. Slips out the handball. Paul oh, Woodlands open goal. That's it. Fine goal, Woodlands. His first, the base second. They've hit the front, 2-3 to the Blues, 2-1. Well, it was just a few moments ago that Woodlands came under the ground to replace Henwood. It was good support running by him. A series of handballs, and uh, he was on the end of them, culminated in his first goal. The Bays have hit the front, 2-3, Sturt 2-1. It's very tight football. Umpires Ross Campbell and Mark Mackey in charge. Campbell puts it down, Spill gets the tap away, but the strength of Maynard comes through, gets the ball up towards the half-forward line, waiting for it is Hall, spins out of the tackle, beautifully done, copping on the left leg, goes for home, ball coming back for too late, one point only. Stephen Copping elected to kick on the left leg, he's been out with a, uh, a torn thigh muscle, David, and before when he had a free kick, I thought he went for the short pass rather than letting his foot go. Perhaps there is a problem there, Ian, but he's... Uh... Still looking to be in good touch. Yes, does appear to be limping just a fraction. Kick to the outer side. Clomp in the middle of the pack. Spiel does the roving. Derrington run down. Good tackle. Well done, Alan Stringer. Gets a long one out in the direction of McDermott. Cutting across him, however, was Andrew Winter. And there'll be a throw in on right half forward flank. 2-4 the Bays. 2-1 the Double Blues. We're approaching the 20-minute mark of this first quarter. Good crowd in. Some exciting football at the moment. Kicked. Goes wide, close to the line, and kept in play. Well, there's a high tackle. Carl Delina, it is in a bit of trouble on the ground at the moment. The attack was in accidental. It was a free because it was very high. They still hurt, David, when they're accidental, don't they? Well, they certainly do, and he's uh, bit the worst for wear at the moment. Spill takes the kick as Delina's still in trouble. Craig has front spot. That's fisted clear. Michael Hagarth, who tries to back into the pack, gets written to the ground. I'll take the free for a push in the back. 
Stern into attack. Wilmot on a lane. That's pretty well put. He's going to get there. Oh, lovely pass. For Wilmot, who uh, got the break on duty, has it now 55 metres out. Saw him struggle for distance with one kick earlier. He's already booted one, however. And that's going to go close. Well, good distance. Great accuracy. Great goal. Two to Wilmot. Playing well. Sturt 3 1, Vanell 2 4. Well, the two things that Ian Wilmot is best at that's taking the mark by holding his ground with his strength and also leading on a long lead. Uh, he's done them both in the first 20 minutes of the game. And that kick was back to his best, so maybe confidence has been restored. Four points, three points. In fact, the difference now, Carey against Spill. Spill went very high. A lot of talk in the press this week about ruck infringements and uh, perhaps uh, some players using their leg unfairly. No sign of that at the moment here at the Bay. 21 minutes gone. Carey had front position. McDermott. Finally, it's Alan Stringer that gets it clear, but Michael Hogarth, playing well at centre wing, gets a kick forward. Martin got an awkward bounce, then ran straight into Grenvold. Gibbs lopes after it. Oops. Into the fence went Ross Gibbs. No damage done, however, other than a rather low return to the boundary umpire. He looks a little discomforted. Carey. Painter who puts one quickly under his boot. Salisbury traps it. His left foot kick doesn't cover much distance. Solid body work from Darrell Smith. Kidney's handball is wide of Maynard and it's out of play. Sturt lead by three points. We're 22 minutes into the first quarter. Throw in on the half forward left flank. Carey having a run on the ball against Spiel. Out goes Carey. Roundhouse right Spiel. Back as far as McDermott. Changes tack out wider as Woodlands. He's going more towards the half forward line and guard on. Thump clear. Marshall almost a great take. Now Kidney. He'll need help. Holding the ball in my book. That's the way the umpire sees it. And the 15 metre plus the free will go to John Painter. The Blues to go in from centre field. Painter gets a lead now from Underwood. He's going out to the outer side. Looking for a lead of Wilmot. Late on the scene. Gibbs was there. Ball farmed out. Quickly Wilmot. The handball not good. In goes Clock. Seabone at the bottom of the pack. Players start to pile up. And the umpire has got no alternative but to come in and bounce. Gee, that was a magnificent kick from Painter. The lead was long for Wilmot. And uh, he almost made it. Spiel hooks it back. Only as far as Alan Stringer. Flanked by McDermott. The Bay's out of defence. Good kick to the outer side. Garten burning in this first turn. This is kick number five. Towards half forward. Hall running into the spot. He's going to run into trouble. Steady's well. The lead is on off. Beautiful passage of play. Walsh has got it. Hall doing great work. But also Garten. That half forward line of Glenelg giving the double blues a lot of trouble at the moment. Walsh from point blank range directly in front has pulled it. Or oh, bad miss by Gavin Walsh. Two five the bays. Three one stir. She won a quarter. Tony Hall's having as well. Three kicks and four handballs, but what he's done with the ball has been superb. McCarthy gets a lead from Spiel. He's going to get a leap away, or is he Hall again? Fine mark. Gee, what strength. He's not all that tall. Going back to kick long. Walsh gave him a lead, then aborted. Now off goes Copping, but he's going in longer towards full forward. Guard on back in there, a lot of players leaping. The back McCarthy, now Frost, goes for the safety of the line. Woodlands is there, but the ball is out of play in the right forward pocket, about four metres from the behind post. 2-5 to 3-1, the Blues by two points. At the throw-in, Reed, Gart on, Gart on's tap. Down in there looking for a free kick was Woodlands, and now it's Darrington who fumbles the ball out of play. Another throw in. Almost into time on of this first quarter. Now, top quarter of football it's been. Reed again. Copping flew from behind. Opportunity now from Alan Stringer. Twists and turns out of trouble. Gets a kick forward. It's in the square. Danger here for the Blues. Lurking at the bottom of the pack. Kidney. Kick doesn't cover much distance. But always going to be given a free. Now I have my on the ball. Ian, you might have to help me here. The umpire indicating that the patch was over the shoulder. Yeah, high tackle put on him. And uh, I think the offending player was Darren Smith. Darrell Smith, is it? I, I'm pretty sure it was. 
And now Kidney's got it. 15 metres out. The drop punt is accurate. First to Kidney. 3-5 the Braves, and they're back in front by four points. Yes, well, Kidney is known for the fact that he gets the ball out of the bottom of the packs. He's prepared to work very hard. Personally, I don't think that he runs up through the, uh, the lines enough to be a, a top attacking rover, but there's no questioning his courage. He spun out of that pack. He got the kick away, but the umpire ruled that that tackle was illegal, and from it, he got a free kick. We're into time on in this first quarter. The difference is four points. The Bay's on top. Henwood's back in the action. Caught with the ball. Pumping action with his right arm. Can't get it clear. Umpire Mackey to bounce. Almost in the centre circle. Marshall, who's playing in the middle today. Stringer appears to have lined up at half back. It's Alan Stringer who takes it on this occasion. Henwood or Marshall caught. Wait on the umpire. Says the ball was held to him. So again, there'll be a bounce. Spill yet to go off the ball. And... Uh, the Bays have had two Ruckman, Henwood and Carey. Spill straight to Alan Stringer. Bays into attack. Garten gets a favourable bounce. Needs help now. And it goes in the direction of Woodlands. Or bursts through. It was clear. Puts it into the square. Not a well-directed kick. McCarthy gets it clear. Two on one here. Salisbury and Grenville against Michael Hogarth. Salisbury comes out with it. Goes in short to half forward. At the back, Darrell Smith. Or well, the handball hit the back of teammate. Smith butters up again, however, and gets one wide. Gets down. Paul Glenelg supporters not happy with that. But Robert Klomp has it at half forward. Painter provides the run for him. Wilmot's on a leg. Painter stops to a halt almost. Then directs it towards half forward. Oh, but that's a courageous mark. Running with the ball. Taken by Chris McDermott. That is a typical McDermott mark. He going short to Gibbs. He's conceded ground. Martin closes on that player but Gibbs gives it to Wayne Stringer. On the half-back line, Marshall wanted it, but I think he'll go beyond that player. Look more for the half-forward line, where Garton is playing so well, but he's charged it out to the outer side. Stringer, the big leaper. Dylena back in defence, goes in short. Derrington thought about Craig. The umpire might ask him to play on because he dummied the handball. No, he doesn't. The umpire said he can have his kick, and he'll kick to the lead now of Walk in the pot. Walk there, but Cruz too strong in the air, too tall. He's taken the fine defensive mark. Intercepted beautifully by Underwood. The handball was meant for McDermott on the half-back line. Underwood fumbled it out of play, but it was a good interception. Spiel and Alan Stringer having a bit of a, an altercation behind play there for the moment. That kicks Mallard. Well, here's a chance from Underwood. Good goal, is it? No, it's not. Just offline. Just when the double blues need a one. Underwood has missed. 3-2, plays 3-5, Glenelg in front. Close to quarter time, there's only been six goals scored and we're 28 minutes, McDermott, he'll bolt off the half-back line, slips it over to Henwood, he wants to get it back in the 1-2, all oh, the handball's a shot, had to go back to get it, put his teammate in trouble, Spiel now, I think he's booted it out on the full, or is it? But no, the handball was behind, where it should never be, and McDermott had to go back and get it. Henwood, Against Spiel, the bodies go in, line ball that one, but Spiel is going to get a free kick. Almost siren time, Spiel plays on quickly, up there, he's going in close, this could be a goal! Oh, he's shepherd it! No, the umpire said hanging on, and it's going to Wilmot. Oh, Duthie doesn't like it, it seemed to be a pretty well body against body for mine, Duthie was half in front. The Bay crowd do not like it at all, shaking their head in disbelief. Wilmot says thank you very much. Boots his third goal. Siren sounds quarter time here at Brighton Road. Sturt 4-2 leading the home side 3-5. Top action on Sevens Big League. three points as we start the second quarter down here at Brighton Road. It'll be Spiel against Henwood. Spiel got the tap away. Smith couldn't take it. Grenvold can. Out now to Stringer. The running player, Marshall, over the half-forward line. He goes for home for the long one. This is going to be close. Shepard through! Oh, what a goal. Brilliantly done, Marshall and Carey. Marshall's first. The Bays hit the front. 4-5 to the Blues, 4-2. 
That's the way football should be played. Absolutely brilliant passage by the Bays. Marshall, with all his clever skills, was on the end of those hand passes. And gee, once he's got it within that distance, look out. Goal to Marshall, 4 5 to Bays, Sturt 4 2. Took exactly 40 seconds to get that goal. Possibly by the time he kicked it, it was even less than that. Henwood again. The ball comes out to Hogarth. Gives a chance now to the other Hogarth. This is Paul. Half forward line goes in long in towards Wilmot. Oh, tit for tat. Wilmot 20 metres out. The ball starting to go from one end of the ground to the other in a flash. And now Wilmot a chance to beat, boot his fourth goal. Shouldn't miss this one. Doesn't. His fourth. The Blues regain the lead. Kick number five. 5-2 five, Sturt. 4-5 Glenelg. Well, he may have been down in confidence before he came to the Glenelg Oval today, but things really have fallen into place for him. Four goals. We've only had, what, about a minute and a half of the second quarter. Completely dominating Doocy. Doocy just going the wrong way every time. So, tit for tat it was. 4-5 the Bays. 5-2 Sturt. Henwood again. Spiel at the centre bounce. Great weather for football, big crowd, great game. What more could you ask for? You see it on seven's big league. Half forward line, Garten got the tap away. The umpire has seen a free kick and it's going the way of uh, Sturt and it'll be taken by Derrington. Derrington just on the check side of centre. Two on one out here. Spill his front position or late on the scene as McDermott. Spill uh, not happy either with the attention that was paid to him. Wilmot on a lead, good pass. Spill, he's got the run at it again. Oh, he's got it. Geez, proving troublesome. Cruz has been switched onto him. Wants to get on with it. In comes Underwood. Good support. And now 15 metre has been paid. And Cruz comes back into the square while Underwood and Wayne Stringer continue their confrontation. Four already. Sensational start by Ian Wilmot. Going for goal number five. Oh, he's got it. Great work from Wilmot. Cruz has been switched on to him, but can't stop him. Five to Wilmot. Sturt, 6-2. Kick clear of the base, 4-5. Yes, well, Frank Spiel took the mark, and McDermott came in late on the scene, and Frank wasn't at all happy. But how about the pass from the big fellow? He wobbles it down onto his boot awkwardly, but you can't fault that perfect pass. A strong mark, 15 metres. And Ian Wilmot's having a birthday. 6-2, the Blues, 4-5, Sturt. Cruz to full back, Doothy gone to the pocket. Bay's making changes in defence. All because of the brilliant work of Wilmot. Clomp, who's been quiet. Painter kicks it out wide. Martin's going to get an awkward bounce. Oh, he's trapped it beautifully. Around one, but not Henwood. Gibbs will do the mopping up. Twists out of trouble and runs into trouble. And finally takes it out of play. So 6-2 the Blues. 4-5 Linnell. Wilmot and Cruz at it in the square. Crew's going to uh, give him a pretty torrid time from here on in, I would think. Underwood, the chance at half forward, called the play on, the ball was touched. Paul Hogarth appeared to get into the back of a Glenelg defender, has done so. Cruz is off, Wilmot chasing him, McDermott with the free. Still, Cruz continues that long run, but the kick from McDermott goes to the other side. Reed got one in the back. Well, the ball left behind out there by Michael Hogarth. Garten went in very vigorously. The handball gives Darrell Smith the opportunity. Blues into attack again. Where's Wilmot? He's in the pocket. Cruz with him. Oh, Cruz strong. Wilmot pulled off it. In goes uh, Cruz once more. Can't get it clear. Bounce in the forward pocket. It looks like it's going to be on. The game getting a little willy. Top game. Sturt by nine points, taking it right up to the bays. A bounce down in the right forward pocket. How about me? I just said Doothy ought to be the state full back and immediately he's taken off Wilmot having booted five. I know my football. Ball socket away now by McDermott. Got it to uh, Maynard. Maynard returns the ball to centre wing. Derrington locking it in. Smith out clear. That's the way the ball ends. Thought about the handball. Johnny Painter. 45 metres out. Goes home with a long one. The umpire says home. Kick number seven. Goal number one. The Blues doing it on the bench. 7-2, they lead the home side 4-5. It's all stirred at the moment. Champagne football from them. Pato on the receiving end of this one. Got it over the top from Smith. Quick thinking. The handball wasn't as good as it should have been, but Pato still had enough time to steady. And gee, what a kick for goal. What a kick he is, but what a great kick for goal. 7-2, plays 4-5. The moment of truth for the Bays. They've got to get back in it now. They're dragging the chain. Stringer went for that knock. 
and Painter got it over towards Klopp. Klopp looking to get out wide. He couldn't do so. Now Derrick is with a chance. No, it's farmed out by Hogarth. The other Hogarth there as well. This is uh, Andrew Hogarth. He's taken the ground. Free kick. And Andrew Hogarth has got the ball on the Michael Hogarth, it is. Yeah. Had to get them right sooner. Michael goes in towards the forward pocket. The ball taken there by Joffa Martin. Or Gibson is over the top who pulls it in. Ross Gibbs now for the Bays. Indicating that perhaps uh, the man David Moore could come over the mark, but the umpire's having none of that. McDermott. Well, the Bays uh, struggling at the moment. Kick number seven from McDermott. He's played well. Spiel has front position. Frost the big leak from behind. On the ground, Tony Hall. Great first quarter. Good play to Grenville. Copping. Winning Kavanagh. Now copping. Close to the line. Or fumbles and uh, puts it out of play. So Copping uh, being tagged by Wayne Kavanagh. And Merv Kane uh, would be pretty happy just at the moment. Still playing good footy. Confidence grown after that win last week. Centre half forward at the moment. Craig going in strongly also was the back pocket player in uh, Andrew Winter. A young player coming into the Sturt side and playing only his fifth league game for them doing well in the back pocket. Reed to Derrington, no one to give it to. Has to do it alone. Well, that handball smothered brilliantly. I think it may have been Peter Maynard trying to get it clear. He couldn't bounce it centre-half forward. Seven minutes gone, second quarter. The Blues by 15 points. The Bays need a goal. Carey in there, thumps it clear. McCarthy running into trouble. The umpire said no. He tried to get it out, shakes his head. The Bays looking for the free kick, but umpire... Campbell in for the bounce. At centre half forward for the Bays. Carey once again gets the tap, but it was only to Derrington. He lets Painter take it. Drives it round to the corner. Grenbold trapped it well on the left leg. Drives it in towards Copping. Can't bring it down. Copping well shepherded, however, by Marshall. Nowhere to go. Back to Grenbold on the left leg. Smothered off the boot. Now Copping has got it. Wanting to set up a pass. Smothered again. Great defensive work by the Blues. They buckle it up and the umpire will come in to bounce. Well, great work by the blue defenders. The Bays on three or four occasions there appeared to have the opportunity to kick it to the square, but very good smothering. Ball, caught. Craig, held without it, says the umpire. Jim Maynard's not happy and he's telling Ross Campbell about it. That won't do you any good, son. Get on with the game. Where's your man? Pick him up. Craig goes out wide looking for Spiel. Grenvold. With him, Michael Hogarth. Hogarth through the legs of Kidney. On the brother, Paul. Paul must go for holding the ball. And the uh, Oak supporters perhaps thinking that they're getting the rough end of the stick at the moment. Well, I don't agree with them. Three kicks, 14 to 6 in favour of Sturt, David. Yeah, it's only because they've been in front and they, they're wanting the ball just a little better than the, the Bays at the moment. Tell the Bay supporters that. Kick is out of bounds on the full. Frost lobs down to get it. McDermott comes to the mark. 7-2 the Blues, 4-5 the Bays. The free kick on the half-back line. What a crowd. David Frost playing against his old club. And can he ever boot a ball? Doesn't let me down. Goes 55 metres. Marshall couldn't. Made out under pressure. The handball out wasn't good. Derrington's was a lot better. Put Hogarth under pressure. Now Painter. This way, that away. Back on the left leg. The pass goes out towards the lead now of Underwood. He's going to have to work hard for this. Lost it to Wayne Stringer. Stringer goes to ground. Picked up by Dalina. On the left leg. Short. Craig. What's running support? Got out of it beautifully. Off goes McDermott. But Craig's going home. But no one at home other than Max Cruz. Cruz showed uh, good judgment then, although Craig's kick wasn't well placed. Norm wanted to take it off on the lead. Kick from Wayne Stringer. Two flyers. Maynard, good mark. Had the drop on Delina on that occasion. Delina being asked to come back. 15 metres against him. Eighth kick to Peter Maynard. Puts it towards half forward. Tony Hall and Peter Reid. Oh, oh, oh well controlled. Used his body brilliantly, stuck out one hand and brought it in. Kidney to the pocket. Now he perhaps could have gone on, but decided to steady. 
It's about 40 metres out, 45 degree angle. The Bays desperately needing goals. They trail by 15 points. Kidney's drop punt is just getting in close. It's on the line of Mark. Yeah. Oh, it's Carey. I thought that was going to go through for a goal, but then in from the side sort of the big fella. And he's flown in the air and taken a great mark just less than a metre out from goal. Being asked to come around on the angle. Carey has gold. First to super. Bays fight back. 5-5 five, five to 7-2. The Bays needed that. And uh, I was just about to say how brilliantly the Sturt defence was hanging up. And then all of a sudden they let Kidney loose. He got into the open space, took the mark, and I agree with David. I think had Super not come over the top of the pack, it would have been a goal in any case. But it doesn't matter. He kicked it, and that uh, doesn't matter who kicks them. 7-2, plays 5-5. Five, five. Top game of footy on our hands here at Glenelg Oval. Spiel. Henwood. Tackled high. Takes the three. Gee, strong. Does a lot of that bullocking hard work that... Often goes unnoticed. Thumps that one looking for Hall or Carey. Copping. Intercepted by Kavanagh. Gee, just when Woodlands looked as though he was going to get clear. Paul Hogarth. Salisbury from behind. McDermott. Backs out of trouble. Gets it over to Salisbury. Oh, he's put under extreme pressure. Coming through was Grenfell. Players stack up and there'll be a bounce on that centre wing. It's a tight game, Ian. Plenty of pressure from both sides reacting to that pressure and playing top football. I agree wholeheartedly, David. It's a good standard football and the, the right things are being done out there by both teams. Seaboam in. Now Derrington, the tackle put on him by Kidney is superb, but unfortunately for Kidney, the ball was over the line for a throw-in. 5-5 five, five to 7-2. Spiel against Garton now. At the throw-in, the bodies go in. Line ball, that one. Craig waits for it. Garton using his body. He'll probably get a free kick for hanging on against Bill. Adam Garton having a run on the ball, maybe. Puts it out in front of Hall. Hall calls his teammate out of it. Plays on quickly. Goes in now looking for Copping. Copping against the tide. Kavanagh takes it off him. Taken off uh, by Painter by Maynard. Did it well. Getting back on it now, Kavanagh. Off the half-back line. Goes short towards centre wing. Hogarth there. Too strong McDermott who took a right cross, possibly made it look worse than it was, but Bone about to put them into attack. A high one up towards full forward, Carey there, McCarthy, quickly now copying if he can pick it up, he can't pick it up, back to Carey, point blank range, goal, number two, the Bays fight back, 6-5, they trail the Roos, 7-2, great action on Sevens Big League. Gee, just for a moment there, I thought uh, Copping had messed that up. He fumbled, was clear at that stage. No Sturt defender within five or six metres of him. Had the fit of the fumbles, but then finally gathered it. Slipped it back to Carey, and Big Super has kicked his second. Great action. 6-5 the Bays. Sturt 7-2. Coming up to 14 minutes, and only three points in the game. Spill backhands it, but it goes straight to McDermott. High now. Hall makes a metre, gets there again. Will he play on? He did last time. Paul Woodlands is out well wide. He's going in towards Copping. One, two grabs. Kavanagh over the top. Socket clear by Garten. Hits the behind post. And a throw-in will take place in the right forward pocket. The Bays in attack. Just three points separating the two sides. Good crowd in to uh, witness this game. And it's one of, the night, one of the good games that we've seen so far in 86. We're going to see plenty more of them. You're watching it on Seven's Big League at the moment. Marie goes in, oh, freeze paid. Copping protests, felt that he had a high tackle. But it's Carl Molina who takes it deep in that back pocket. Changes tack and goes to the other side. Now, this could be dangerous. Craig, almost outmarked by Woodlands. The support from Grenville. Left it behind. Craig does it. Craig's kick is a long one down that outer side. But Seabone drifting across from centre half back. Takes a mark with ridiculous ease. Top player, John Seaboam. Thumps it back to half forward. Frost and Craig up. Neither could mark. Grenvold, but out of play. Change being made by the base. Steve Copping coming off. We thought that he may have had a problem with that leg and just appears to be limping slightly. He's off. Walsh is back on. The action's on the other side of the ground at the moment. 
Darrington gets it to Delina. Twists out of trouble. He's going to be caught. Gets a hurry kick away. Oh, Grenville got a horrid bounce. Gives Hogarth the opportunity. On to Darrington. Spiel. Spiel around the corner. Goes in high looking for Wilmot. Walk in there as well. Watt takes it. Can't get a kick clear. Henwood caught. Now Doozy. Seabone gives him support. Back to Doozy it goes. The Bays are out of trouble. Not only momentarily because uh, Derrickton slips in on that outer side and takes them up. He's on the attack side of wing. The Blues doing it well, but the Bays now fighting back. Looks for Joffa Martin in the pocket. He's got it. The boy from Mildura might be too far out to score. He's got Wilmot darting off into the pocket. He's going over his head in the square. Big leap by Duthie. Cruz back there as well. The umpire said the ball was held to him and will come in and bounce. A bounce about 15 metres out. I think Cruz just breathed a sigh of relief. Must have been touch and go under the new interpretation. Spiel against Henwood. Henwood thumps the ball clear. Fortunately found McDermott. A high ball. Back centre field looking for it. Marshall. Garten there with him. Marshall comes out with a footy. Gives it out in front of Grenbold. Over the half forward line they go. The kick is a shocker. Finds Kavanagh with an erring accuracy. Craig. Can play on if he elects. Does so. Painter having an interesting duel with Marshall. This is kick number 10 to Painter. Marshall's had eight kicks, so pretty much blind ball at the moment. Cleverly done by Klopp. Paul Hogarth gets it back to Klopp. Forced to kick with his left foot, finds Martin. Nobody in the square. Underwood lobs there now with Dirty, but Martin obviously thinks he can make the distance. It's about 50 metres out. Oh, he's launched into that one. That's a beautiful kick. Oh, great goal. First to Martin. Top action on seven big lead. Can he make the distance? He did it by about 20 metres. And Sturter hanging in there. And it's a great comeback then because the Bays had started to rattle on the goals and looking a pretty top unit. But Martin got the mark and uh, he went back confident, as you like, popped through the long one. And Sturt resumed now a nine-point advantage. The bounce, an awkward one for Henwood, but Salisbury cleverly gets it back to McDermott. Alan Stringer puts them forward. Paul's got front possession, oh, holds his ground beautifully. Not paid, well. I think they've got every right on that occasion, Ian. I thought he had plenty of that. Umpire Mackey didn't agree with him, but... You've got to see few supporters in this stand, David, I can tell you. Well, I'm siding with them at the moment. Kavanagh. Painter with kick 11 towards half forward. Klopp from in front. Seabone behind. Henwood. Walk. Derrington on that left foot. Wilmot on the lead. Can't quite make it. Martin through. Here's a go. Paul Hogarth steadies into the open goal. Walking in. Bootsy second. Great football from the double blues. Two to Hogarth. 9-2 plays 6-5. Yes, beautifully done. Set up well there by young Hogarth. Paul Hogarth, he's only a very young player. I think he comes from the river too, doesn't he? From Mildura, yes he does. And Sturt have answered the challenge. 9-2, brilliant kicking. The 6-5, the Bays. And we've played almost 20 minutes of the second quarter. Great game of football. Some brilliant passages. Probably none better than that one we just witnessed then. 41 the Bays, 60, 56 rather the double blues, 15 points in it. Approaching the 20 minute mark of the second quarter. Darrell Smith tried to get it clear. Kidney goes in after it. Finally it comes out. Gives Garton the opportunity. Well, McDermott's going to be caught, but quickly gets it on. Wenvall, Goodlam's rather, had Maynard. Ball rebounds to him. Marshall diving attempt. Can't take it. McCarthy. Clear. Awkward bounce. Chance to get it clear now. In the pocket, Salisbury, ball hooks back, Baxter's had a goal, but is it a miracle? Oh, he has! Gee, how did he get that through? Facing them away almost, has shredded it through the goals. 7-5 the Bay, Sturt, 9-2. Oh, that's got to be goal of the year to date. Salisbury was on his wrong leg. The only way he could possibly kick a goal was to hook it around the corner with his left. Chose to kick a, I think it was a banana ball with his right foot, brought it back magnificently 
for his first in the Bay 7. Unbelievable. Oh, tremendous action here at the Glenelg Oval. We're seeing all of the skills of Australian rules football that on display at the moment. Garten, horrid bounce. Corsby in it again. Goes short. Tony Hall. Three on two. Bay supporters one of three. None forthcoming. Carey caught. Unloaded. Corsby. The brick wall. Winter ran into him. Corsby who just booted that one. I think he may have done another one. Oh no. Just offline. And young Andrew Winter's in trouble at centre half back. Got a very heavy knock in the head. A point to Salisbury. 7 6 the Bays. 9 2 the double blues. What a game. David, I'm trying to work out where he's playing. I thought he was on a half back line, but he's shooting for goals more often than the forwards. Spool tried to back knock it. Got it to Kavanagh. Kavanagh's going to make clockwork hard for this one. The bounce wasn't all that good. Seabohm through. Taken off him by Stringer. He's under pressure. That's holding the ball. A little bit belated by the umpire, but the decision was correct. Derrington at centre wing to put the Blues into attack. First is the Blues, then it's the Bays. Kick for kick they go. What a struggle. Eight points the difference. 20 odd minutes, 22 minutes into this second quarter. On the lead was Cray. McDermott. Puts it centre field. Cross and got on cross. Good mark. Sets it out now. Payne on the lead is Will One out in front of that pass. Beautifully put John Payne And he's got it five metres out in front of Max Cruz. Well, Wilmot can make the distance from there. He's getting a lead from uh, from Hogarth, but he can certainly make the distance. He's on a 45-degree angle. The kick is going to be offline and marginally short. But just knocked off the hat of the umpire. But he's still got enough breath in his body to indicate one point only. 9-3, plays 7-6. Good kicking by the double blues as well. Nine goals from... 12 uh, scoring shots. Seabone. Goes straight down the ground. The lead from Marshall. Well placed. Now here's a go. Handball to Cruz. They've got the loose man. Out wide. Looking for Garten from behind. Hall. Oh, too quick. Too elusive for the lead at the moment. Hall uh, with kick number eight. Playing very well. Pat should have got on with the job just a little quicker. Carey from behind. Not played. Kidney went through, player stack up. It wasn't Kidney, it was Maynard. Kidney was on the outskirts on that occasion. Really a bounce. Ooh, just 25 metres from the Bay goal. Nine points the difference. We're almost into time on of the second quarter. Selena. McDermott. Out of bounds. Or touched up hand. Umpire Mackey indicating that the ball was touched from the boot and there'll be a throw in. Approaching full time in the second quarter. The throw in, if they get the ball back from some of those junior supporters, will take place adjacent to the behind post. Carey against Frost. Carey trying to indicate where he's going to knock the ball. He hooked it back, but he only found the third player. Painter can run it out of defence. No pressure. Painter, a long kick to the outer side. Well done by Seabone. Looking for Klopp, but Seabone too strong in the air. He turns the ball, the half-forward line. In goes guard on, and that's the thump the ball. Fortuitously finds Woodlands. Woodlands puts it up for Carey. Carey, McCarthy, Carey! Can't quite get it. At the back there, waiting for it is Hall. He's under pressure, gets the kick away. Working hard for it now is Walsh. Walsh under pressure, close to holding it. And McCarthy, and McCarthy boots the blue spear up towards centre field. Garten. Got a high one, but still took the mark. Bays go back into attack. Hall and Woodland. Woodland takes it out in front. Almost at the 25-minute mark of this quarter. Woodland who's a good 45, 50 metres from goal. Caught and shot. Nine points the difference. Woodlands. Hit one. Won't make the distance. Carey from behind. Winter takes it over the line. A rush point. So 7 7 Glenelg, 9 3 the double blues. Into time on in the second quarter. A top game of football. Big crowd, perfect day. Sun, although not very strong, is out. McCarthy looking for Spiel. Henwood at the back. Spoils the pack. 
Garrington comes up with a footy. Has time to bounce and look from the half-back line. Prop gives the lead from uh, Will put Darrington. Comp almost centre wing off goes Wilmot now. Puts it out in front of Wilmot. He's going to have to make a metre to get there. Well done, Cruz. So the umpire's going to give him a free kick. Against Cruz. Got his fist to the ball definitely at the last moment. But in doing so, got into the back now of Wilmot. Well, he couldn't make the distance from this area before. I think he'll be struggling now. And the angle is more acute. Going to be short. Big leap of players. Henwood thumps the ball clear. McDermott further still. Stringer got it to Stringer. Well, that one was a little dangerous, but it's Kidney that runs the ball out of defence. Has one bounce. Now he goes long. Up towards Walsh. Well taken. Cavan on the half-back line. And the Blues will get out of trouble through this play. He's shown they're playing very good football in defence. Has a few options here, but decides to go long to the outer side. And all the sit was from Doozy. Couldn't hold it. Michael Hogarth puts it in front of him. Well, in the action, Doozy gets clear. Wasn't Doozy. It was Grenfell. But there's been a free kick play. Going back to the double blues, and I think you'll find it's Michael Hogarth that has it at half forward. Hogarth probably too far out to score also. We saw Wilmot not able to make the distance from about the same spot. And here's a uh, tremendous kick of the ball, Wilmot. Goes short, Painter. She's played well, Painter. This is kick number 14, and we're just at the 27-minute mark of this term, so tremendous game from Painter. He's kicked one in this quarter. Now, the distance is about 50 metres, and he's gone back another 30. Going to take a long run in, obviously. Puts the drop punt on his way. He's pushed it across. One point only. Nine for the Blues. 7-7 seven, seven, Glenelg. Top player, John Painter. Also playing against his former teammates. Kick in by Cruz. Goes to the outer side. Gives up, but as Grenbold, he comes out with a football. Coming to meet it is Walsh. Got an awkward bounce. Could get it back to McDermott. He does, and he goes back for Gardon. Gardon has got Marshall clear, but he's going over that player. The lead of Hall. Great mark again. Or do you think this ball got boy can hang on to the leather? Brilliantly done. Very awkward. Carey charges off. Going to get a leap at that one. Quickly now, Salisbury. Can he make it number two? The umpire said he has. Got his Salisbury from 20 metres out. Puts on the base. Eight goal. Fine player, Scott Salisbury. We are just wondering where he is playing, but he seems to be now going back to that half-back flank. If that's the case, he's booted two from the half-back flank. The way football was played in, in modern days, uh, that's not all that unusual, though. We saw West Adelaide half-back flankers kick three the other day. So, so Salisbury uh, was playing well. The Bays are back in it. Three points the difference. We're into time on by about four minutes. Centre back Spiel hasn't kicked too many goals in his career. Only about 15. So uh, he's having a field day today. Spiel got the tap. Well done, Croft. Salina. Spiel. Pucker. Seabone. Long one to the half forward line. Getting back on it was Cavan. Well taken off. It's now quickly in Zagaton. Sorry, didn't pick him up quickly. Got on. It was Maynard that lost it. Fourth goal. The Bays hit the front. 9-7 to the Blues. 9-4. Almost on siren time, and the Bays have struggled their way back into the lead. And look, the one stage is over. The double Blues are going to take a fairly commanding hole halfway through the quarter. From sheer persistence, the Bays now find themselves in front. Spiel and Henwood. And a great struggle. Spiel again towards Painter. Couldn't. Darrington can. Got it back now to Painter. Half forward line. Almost Martin. Darrington. Clock. Clock can get it round quickly now. Hogarth. 30 metres out on the left leg. Fires. He's got it. His third goal. Paul Hogarth. Third goal. And the Bays lose the lead again, trail 9-7 to 
Gee, it really is tit for tat, isn't it? Just as one side gets in front, back comes the other one. That was a great effort from Hogarth. The two brothers have played well. They've combined well. They've been uh, inspirational in their football. Three points to difference. This time, third in front. Great kicking on both sides. 19 goals, 11, all told, have been kicked. But then again, it is great weather. Walsh. Nowhere to go. Spill did it well. String up Wayne tight the chance. Oh, he got it over to Underwood. Underwood got a dream run. Fires in long. Well marked. Whoop. That's the way you lose the ball sometimes. Might have been a little lucky. I'm pretty certain that uh, the kick was meant to be a goal from Underwood. Kick number nine, Wilmot. He's already booted five. That makes it six. Half time, the Blues 11 4, Glenelg 9 7. Point advantage as we go into the second half. Carey against Spiel, line ball. Maynard smothered, go on. Half forward on a high kick. Cruz playing it full forward, got a big lead. Oh, almost pulled down the mark, goes in after the ball and the umpire will come in to bounce. Well, Graham Cords has made a move. Cruz, who was standing Wilmot at one stage, has gone to full forward, and Hedwood is on the danger man in Wilmot, who's booted six goals to half time. The bottom of the pack block gets it out. As far as Smith, Smith off the half back line, kicks long, up towards Hogarth, Carey, or through that out, and the umpire agreed with me. Free kick will go to Spiel. Bill just on the attacking side of centre. Wilmot off on a lead. Henwood with him. Walsh got front position. Henwood at the back. Superior judgment. Oh dear. 15 metres now. And Henwood will uh, kick the bays out of trouble. Towards centre half forward. Big pack of players. Delina puts it over to Derrickson. On it goes to Martin, oh, not a good kick, gives Wilmot the chance, needs help now. Walsh, caught. Steve Owen went in strongly. Good player at the bottom of the pack, I just uh, can't pick up for the moment. It looks as though it might have been Andrew Underwood. Bounce at centre half forward. 11 4 Sturt, 9 7 the Bays. Carey and Spiel, now Gibbs. Been pretty quiet today, Ross Gibbs. McDermott hasn't, he played well. Maynard also been in the thick of things. Bouncing his way clear, gives it to Walsh, bays into attack, ball in the middle. Juggles well taken. Well played on with it. Now I'm not sure where the umpire played the mark. Anyhow, here's a go for Kidney in the pocket. Fires into the goal. Oh, I think he's got it. He has. Robin Kidney. Scores first point for the Bays in the third quarter in second. Now 10-7, 11-4. Brilliantly done the Bays. Gibbs got it in the back pocket. And from there in, it was way to go all the way. Not another Sturt player touched the ball. Don't know why Tony Hall didn't uh, take his mark. Maybe he was asked to play on, I don't know. But he got it out the kidney who made no mistake. The Bays 10-7, Sturt 11-4. Back in the centre with umpire Mackey. Carey. Had a great duel with Spiel, as Henwood did have. Henwood now asked to go to full back. Donovan's on the ground, puts it to forward. Popping, oh, is he going to be part No. Gee, the bag supporters are not happy. Popping, also not happy with umpire Mackey, but he indicated that the Sturt player got his hand on it first. Spiel taps it wide. Kidney, caught. Darrell Smith, been a good player for the Double Blues. As is Michael Hogan. Pop from in front, Steve Owen behind, out of play. Three points the difference, Blues in front. Three minutes of the second half. Steve Owen, a fine de defender. Kieran, having a run in rough as David told you, with Henwood at full back, feeling front spot. Kieran got the tap away, couldn't get it to anyone. Clock first there, now Peter. 
got to concede ground. He does it well back to Smith. And he'll start from check side of centre wing. Plays on now with a long kick. Gibbs going to judge this one well. Did it easily. To get it over to McDermott. Here's a chance now for him to run. McDermott clear. Garten in a long lead. He's going to have to half volley. He does. Looking for Maynard. That conceded ground. That's a high kick. Not a good one. Paul's going to have to change. Chase it. Got it out well. Woodland. Marshall short. That's the way the ball will end. Marshall right forward. Pocket catch. Shoot for goal. And the ball is offline. The Bays did just about everything right then. Marshall just not accurate from 35 metres out. They did do it right, but they went a long way home. Across the ground, Marshall's kick from that pocket offline. So just two points in it. The scores have been very close all day. McCarthy on the grandstand side looking for Spill. Can't quite make it. Grenville. Back to Carey. He's going to be caught off track. He gets it to Maynard. Maynard clear, 35, 40 metres out. Long shot for goals, offline. 10 9, 11 for the double blues. Good kicking, 11 goals from 15 scoring shots. The difference now is just one point. Well kicked, Peter Maynard, plus a handball. Good player. Horn's not resting easy, although the Bays are starting to pepper the goals now. But they can't get it between the, the wide opening of the goal. Sir taken right up to them. Excellent kicking 11-4. And the Bays are down by a point. Neil Cross. Not paid. Darrington. Play. Off the half-back line. Dummies well. Slips out the handball. McCarthy. High kick to the half-forward line. Big lead game. Just as when you say that he hasn't been prominent. All of a sudden he, uh, he comes into it like a flash. He's got 15 metres. Could get 30 if the boys don't leave him alone. Off he bolts now. Over the half back line long. Tony Ball! Oh, what a winner! Oh, he has his name on that from Wayne Gully. Mark number 11 and what a brilliant grab. Now, can he complete it with a goal? 45 metres out. Even Graham Corns like that one. How could you not like it? 45 metres out. The kick is going to let him down. I think it's going to be marginally short. Leap in the square. Who is it? Garland. Well, it still could be a goal. For oh, gee, if he could have finished that off with a goal, it would have been a, a support one act affair. Garland being pushed around on a pretty obtuse angle. Kick number 12, Garland. He's had a fine game. Oof, where's that gone? Just only a point. The umpire had to confirm with a boundary umpire to indicate that any score took place at all. Scores tied away. Kim Hodgman, uh, who's not uh, on the ground, of course. He was over the fence. Popped an injury a couple of weeks ago. He's being missed at the moment. Scores all tied away. It's a great game of footy. Cross. Pumps it towards centre wing. See, that's a long kick, and that's good mark. Wayne Cavanagh. Poppy still seems to be troubled by that leg. David Moore, good defence by Donovan. Moore had a pretty quiet one today. He's been under pressure. Perhaps not enough space for him at the moment. Likes to, has had a kick in fact today, David Moore, and likes a little bit more room to work in. Carey. Maynard caught. The ball held to him. Painter and Maynard exchange, exchange rubs of the head and uh, he ruefully rubs his chin also. Here he flips the back, but only far as Painter. Painter slips it back to Michael Hogarth. Around the corner he goes. Donovan, Rob Bowler, the handball to Derek with his good footy. Painter wants to come back in the middle. Stands motionless and puts it high. Looks for Paul Hogarth. There's a back off. No, it's not Paul Hogarth. It's Andrew Underwood. But no. Gee, I thought that uh, Walsh had him. And it just drifted, drifted over the top. And now Underwood, from 45 metres out directly in front, has the chance to kick the double blues 12. He hasn't booted a goal. He's taking plenty of care over it. Got in a bit close to the man on the mark. He's got the distance okay. Shake of the goalpost, but it's on the wrong side. One point. 
10 10. How about the calmness of John Pater there? How can a man in a running side just stand on his own for two seconds without moving? No one even going to try to chop him off. Big leap there by Walk, but he's going to have his first kick now. Nicky handballs, of course. He gets the lead from Wilmot into the pocket. It's beautifully put. Wilmot or Buck clear. Back to Martin. In the right forward pocket. That's a beautiful kick. Drop a Martin. That's home. Well, what a goal. His second. The Blues come back. He got the lead to seven points. 12-5 well, to 10-10. Well, obviously the plan in defence by the Bays is to get it away from Wilmot and instead of reading this pretty well, we've sent a couple of goals from Blake's uh, Rovers that are prepared to sit at the bottom, not close in the pack, but about 10 or 15 metres away. Martin took it on that opportunity and booted his second. 12-5 well, the double blues, 10-10 the Bays. Nine and a half minutes gone. The Blues by seven points and it's been like this all day. Spiel. Against Carey. Spiel a big knock. Almost trapped by Seabone. Cross got it. Craig out comes Wilmot. Wilmot against Henworth. Wilmot still in there fighting. Got to get it back now to Hogarth. Paul. Wilmot again. Gave it away to the other fellow in Michael Hogarth. And finally the base kick clear. Maynard is well clear. McDermott will get it next. Over the centre line they go. The long kick up towards Hall again. Right back, Tony Hall. How's this guy grabbing them? It's unbelievable. That's his 12. I thought he was under that. Even then it wasn't one grab. He got his fingertips to it on the way down. He grabbed it. And he's got it 30 metres out in front. What a game he is playing. Definitely trying for the mark of the day prize. And this time the kick is accurate, his second goal. And now the Rays come back. 11-10 to 12-5. Sensational margin performance by Tony Hall. He's taken 12 of them. Most of them, mean, most of them have been big ones. And now he's booted his second goal. He really is playing well. Hit for tat again. 11-10, 76 to Bays. 12-5 to Sturt, 77, only one point in it. Centre bounce, Carey against Spiel. 11 minutes, just gone by. Kidney against Craig. Now Pater, beautifully farmed out. I think that was more luck than anything else. But Walker's got it. Sitting on it, Wilmot, great mark. Henwood realised he was underneath the ball. I wouldn't be at all surprised if he might have got a hand to it. But Wilmot stood his ground well, took the mark, and he's got it 10 metres out in front. He's kicked six. Coming back into form with a vengeance. Great kicking by the Blues. 13-5, 10 kicks, Wilmot, seven goals. 13-5, sturdy, 11-10, the Bays. Top action on seven's big league. Well, we just mentioned that David Walk hadn't had a kick to end the game. Now he's had two important ones. Both have resulted in goals. The first one was raised by Martin, but that one was beautifully put. Wilmot dropped back. The long kick from Walk was into the square. From the moment he left his boot, Wilmot was going to mark it. Carey against Spiel. It's just non-stop action here at the bay. Good bounce. Stringer. Hogarth. Changes tack, wobbles one to the half forward line. Getting back on it, Salisbury with him is Martin. And uh, Salisbury's going to get a free kick for a high tackle. He's at centre half back. He'll kick the base clear now towards half forward. Garten on a lead. The three stirred defenders flew. Frost finally took it. Hasn't got much distance. Carey. Over the top to run McDermott. Fingertip control. Just can't pull it in. Oops, slips to ground. Now gets a handball. Back to Kidney. Runs him into trouble. Bay's messing around. Fortuitously, it comes to Grenvold. He's on load. Stringer, Alan Stringer, that was. Michael Hogarth had an airy. Spill using his body strongly gets rid of Maynard. Daryl Smith sets it up to Painter. Sturt playing well. Wilmot in front of Henry. He's up. Second attempt, not five. Walk the crumbs. Help needed. Into the pocket it goes. Wilmot. Or taps it cleverly back in the direction of Paul Hogarth. He pushes it on forward. Martin and 
Seaborn, in they go, strongly at the end of the square. Oh, great passage of play, good defence by the Bays, and some very good attacking football by the Double Blues. Is it ever desperate defence? Exciting football. The Blues by seven points, right on the edge of the square. Carey tried to hook it back, did so. Clomp, under pressure. Salisbury, Martin likewise. Martin can't get the kick away. Gibbs at the bottom of the pack. In goes Sebo, and the umpire will come in to bounce. A top game of football. 13-5 to 11-10. 15 minutes into the second half. The crowd really on their toes. Carey cleverly back towards Kidney. He goes to ground. The umpire set a push in the back. And the Bay Rover will relieve the pressure from the back pocket. Kidney just having trouble extricating himself from the Sturt forwards. Now goes short. Oh, that's not well directed. Well, not on his left foot. It's going to bounce through. Oh, it has. Gee, a bad mistake from Kidney. Well, what has capitalised on it? He's booted his eight. What a performance. Great action on Seven's big league. Robin Kidney right now could hide under the nearest blade of grass. I mean, it's dangerous enough at any time to clear a cost goal. There he had a free kick. His kick was a shocker. Wilmot couldn't believe his luck. But, gee, his luck continued when it bounced through for his eighth goal. What a game of footy. 76 plays, 89. Sturt in front. Maynard pumps the base back into attack. From behind, copping. Kidney gives him the support. Goes short into the pocket. Cruz at the back, however. Good defence by Tony McCarthy, and he's forced it out of play. Gee, it's been a great game of footy, 76 to 89. That's probably been the biggest margin throughout this game. Copping, Garten playing well at centre-half forward. Kidney runs through the pack, can't get clear. Garten throws himself at it. Doing so, gets into the back of a Sturt defender. Jimmy Derrington it is there. Little Rover, who'll take it deep in that back pocket. Derrington always at the bottom of the packs getting out the handballs kick number 10 at the moment taking his time settle play down spills at centre wing that's the way the ball will travel Carey there Tony Hall up again oh, oh, I'm running out of superlatives what a brilliant mark short to Maynard and they're all one grabbers brilliantly done Maynard up towards Garland got the leap Marshall can't get through Trying to run through with Smith. High tackle, and the free kick will go the way of the Sturt player. That's if he can take it. He looks like he's prostrate on the ground. Guard on up, and I think it's Darrell Smith at the bottom of the pack. Just coming awake now. And uh, yes, it is. Gee, he runs into some trouble. He has more injuries than the RAH accident wing. He's not going to, I thought he's going to get a good free kick. Or is he going to get the free kick? If he can take it, there was a player on hand. David Frost, but Smith struggling to regain his senses, gives it over to Frost, which is a good move because he can boot a country kilometre, a long one to the outer side. At the back is Painter, ball first there, cleverly paid. Players stack up and the umpire will bounce. 14-5, the double blues, 11-10 the Bays. 17 minutes gone in the third quarter, bounce on the outer side. Spill hasn't been off the ball to date. Gee, Hall playing brilliantly, although that kick's not a good one. Close to the line, McDermott juggles, but it's out of bounds on the full. Free kick to Sturt. Looks like Wayne Kavanagh over there, who'll put him back into attack. Spill's got front position, Carey brought the front leg up, got rid of Spill and took the mark. Carey, just on the defensive side of centre. Big pack of players congregating in the centre of the ground. Garten, Reed, throws himself on it. In the back, says the umpire. Perhaps a little lucky, Peter Reid. Miss McDermott hands him the ball back. And he'll, uh, he'll kick from centre-half back. Goes to the centre. Spill's got the drop on him. Who should have taken it. Now hooks it back in the direction of Robert Clark. Threads it out wide to Hogar. Michael Hogar from right hard forward. Hooks for brother Paul in the square. Can't quite get to it. Gibbs goes back after it. Gets a short hurry, kick close to the line. Good play, Ross Gibbs. Good defensive work. 14-5 to 11-10. 13 points the difference. Mervyn Kane never looks any different but uh, pensive. 
kick away by Walsh, I think it was in defence, finds Craig. Craig centre field, puts out the pass. Hogarth, Michael Hogarth, about 45 metres out. Sturt doing it well, the Bays are going to have to lift their performance to get out of this one. 13 points is not a lot. The way the game is going, Sturt look to be playing the better of the two. Hogarth has kicked one. That is going to make the distance, but he's just offline for a point. 14-6 the Blues, 11-10 the Tigers. Hogarth brothers have been pretty good players. One on centre wing and one on half forward flank. Gibbs takes the kick in. Heads to the outer side. Three against two there. Alan Stringer oh, in trouble. Thrown out of it. Quick forward. Spell. Frank Spell at centre half forward. Not the longest kicker of the ball you've ever seen, so he may have trouble making the distance, but he's only about 50 metres out. Wilmot. Waits in the square. Gee, he's got eight today. Hot in pursuit of big uh, Grenville Dietrich, who had 19 before today. Spurl's kick is offline. He's going to get the distance OK. It's one back. Not enough. One point. 14-7 now the double blues. 11-10 the bays. And we're at the 20-minute mark of the third quarter. Gibbs looking for a lead. Asking a player to come to him. And it's Maynard who answers his seek for help. Kicks back towards centre wing. <laughs> Tony Hall again. How about this guy? He's a freak. One-handed that one, just for good measure. As he kicks to the half-forward line. Coppin's going to get a leap away. Kavanaugh over the top. Spoils. Wayne Stringer roundhouse right back towards centre half-forward. Bone McDermott now Kidney. Grenvold wants it on his left leg. Shoots for goal. The up by steady. He's just offline for a point. Promising attack. Unfortunately for Grenbold, he was caught on the left leg and couldn't make the grade. One point for the Bays. They move on now to 11, 11 to 14-7. 22 scoring shots to 21. The, the difference is 14 points in favour of the double blues. Kick along the grandstand wing. Where's Tony Hall? He hasn't got it to this one. The other big fella has Peter Carey. Bangs it back from whence it came. Oh, up high went Max Cruz. Couldn't hold it. Double Blues defence good. Craig in trouble. Around. Still in trouble. Finally it finishes with Derrickton. Gee, they're a bit lucky to get out of that one. Walk on a lead. Should get it. Has. Where's Wilmot? Wants it in long. Now comes back the other way. The lead from Wilmot's ignored. It's Martin against Gibbs. Martin! Should have been paid, wasn't. Then now umpire Mackey is seen it free. He and he agree with me. I, I do, David. Martin marked that. Ball as sure as God, mate. Little apples. Ball again, but this time it's Stringer. Alan Stringer. Half back flat. Game number 100. Tough customer. Short to Hall. And that's yet another mark to Hall. That's his 16th mark. That's phenomenal. Even Stephen Kernan, I don't think, would have pulled down that many marks in an afternoon. He probably has. The Bays haven't got any running players at the moment. Sturt are out running them. Delina. Out now to Smith. Frost. Up the half-back line. Wobbles one up towards Hall again. Walk in. Gibbs. And the umpire will come in to bounce. 11-11, good help. 14-7 still. See, that's about the first time that the ball's been in his area. Tony Hall's area, I mean, and he hasn't marked it. 16 marks. We're not at three-quarter time. Got it again. The ball's following him. The kick towards half forward in front. Reed from behind. It was Garton. Well, but that's good, consistent umpiring. Play the man in front at all times. Frost goes out wide. Underwood on a lead. Well put. Double Blues looking strong late in this third term. Pass, looks for Klopp, out in front of Seabone. Into the open spot it goes. Painter, back to Underwood, and he's clear. Paul Hogarth calls for it, but it's gone wide of him. Carey gets an awkward bounce. Wilmot, off the spill. Spill puts a high one into the square. 
but it's all the days back there and Henwood takes the easiest of relieving marks. Did you see the way that Ross Gibbard, uh, Gibbs just shepherded? He, he did it beautifully. Just stood casually in front of Hogarth so he couldn't run at Henwood. He got 15 metres to Garten, or oh, Garten's brought his own man. A chance Frost now over the half forward line. He's going for home. Normally he'd get a better kick away. Gibbs lost it. Hogarth wants support. Back to Walk. Walk lies on the ball. Gets out the long handball. Too far for Wilmot. With him is Henwood, and the ball goes out of play. Gee, the Bay starting to fight one another for the ball now. Both flying and not one not standing down. Gibbs in the back pocket, having his work cut out as the Bays are starting to chase jumpers. 14-7 to 11-11. 24 minutes gone. Carey against Spiel. Forced through. Here's a chance for Martin. Where's the footy? The umpire's going to give a free kick. Which way is it going? And I think it's going the way of Bonnell, and it's Henwood to take. Yes, big Henwood. Top one high. Interesting move. Switch to full back. Wilmot still kicked two in this term. He got three in the first and three in the second. Alan Stringer went high and got paid. We've seen some sensational marking here today, particularly from Tony Hall. Alan Stringer's kick from behind Craig. Had a quiet one. Should get 15 metres here. Lays it off to Painter. Painter looks for Wilmot, but it's McDermott. Cutting the space off and taking the mark. Gibbs. Carey. Gets a good bounce. Well, not a good kick from Carey. Puts it back into the centre of the ground. Three Sturt players. Now four. Smith to Craig. Wants support. Back it comes to Smith, but he's in trouble. Gets a handball clear. Alan Stringer with courage. Now Hogarth. Appeared to be tackled a little high. Finally, umpire is seen. Holding the ball. And the Bays will take it. Grenvold was it. Kicks it wide. Finds Maynard at centre wing. Two players here. Kidney gets it from Maynard. Runs to half forward. Thumps one into the square. Almost coughing in the front. Sturt defence cool. Calm. Collected. Smith. In trouble is uh, Sturt defender. It was Tony McCarthy, but he's got a high tackle and will take the free. The Bay supporters are not happy. Neither would I be if my side was down 14 points. Hogarth over. Carey in there is Spill. Did it well, but only got it out as far as McDermott. Oh, there's a lot of Bay players short. Fight on behind play. And Bo Mack, he's got to go back to have a look at it. Big leap up front. Tony Hall. Here's a chance. Crew shoots for goal. Offline, or oh, the umpire changed his mind. I thought he's going back to uh, the wave of a goal, but it was only a point. Carey gets up from the bottom of the pack, and the players think better off the little tater tape they were having. 11 12 the Bays, 14 7 the double blues. We're into time on. Wars kick to the outer side. Painter's got the sit and should mark. Craig and Delina, that's the 21st kick to Painter. Played a top game, Delina in the centre. Well, here's a go, Kavanagh, Wilmot on the lead, Henwood from behind, Gibbs at the back. Ample time to go whichever way he wants. Nobody to kick it to on this grandstand side. Grenvold's late on the scene, but uh, he found the safety of the line. 13 points the difference, it's been a torrid third quarter. 27 minutes into it and full marks to the double blues. Seabone, only as far as Spiel, gets a hurry kick forward. Gibbs getting back on it, will mark. So the Iceman goes out wide. Maynard, two on one out here. Maynard and Walsh against Underwood. One's offloaded, the other picks it up. It's Walsh, gets it back to the centre of the ground. From behind, Marshall. Marshall has it at centre wing. Boy's kick has only gone to Painter on the mark over the top. Here's a go for the double blues. Wilmot coming out with him, Henwood. Chance for Paul Hogarth at the back. Four against one. Needs help. Carey off the Gibbs. And they're out of trouble. Looked like a throw to me. The umpire didn't see it that way. Fine mark, Stringer. Sticky fingers. The Bays have got problems. Stringer to the half-forward line, and it's starting at the half-forward line. They can't get through there. It's Smith in defence, took the fine mark. Craig is clear. The Bay's not picking up their players. Kidney. 
But Craig drives long. See by him a big leap. Salisbury caught beautifully done. Use him as a doormat. We're one in the square. Goal number nine. Can't miss. Beautifully done, Robert Clark. 15-7, the Blues. 11-12, Gunnell. Ah, oh, you go a long way before you'd sit it, see a better game of football than this. Magnificent stuff then from Klopp. First the big jump from Seaboam. Couldn't hold it. Then with just pure strength, Klopp got through. Wilmot dropped back. Over the top it went. And he's banged through his ninth goal from 12 kicks. Fine football. Moving up on 29 minutes. Must be very close to three-quarter time. Spiel. Grenvold through, got edged off by Painter, did it well. Derrington against the tide, whips out a long handball, it was a good one. Frost bolts off the half-back line, spears the ball out in front of Wilmot again. Walsh getting back. He's under pressure, however, nowhere to go. He's got to go for the safety of the line. Marshall, who's having a quiet afternoon, will go to Kidney with a handball. He, in turn, will go to Woodlands. The Bays with a chance to get a goal, maybe. Maynard is clear, doesn't want that player. Kicks long towards the half-forward line. Tony Hall again, can't bring it down. Cruz looking for support. Out wider still, it's Maynard. He goes for home with a long one. The up said they've got a goal. All well, they needed it. First goal, Maynard. 16th kick. 12-12 Glenelg, 15-7 Sturt. Mm, indeed, they did need it. It was good play, finished with Maynard, and that's a good goal from where he kicked it close onto that boundary line. Gee, the Bay's just struggling at the moment. 12-12, 84, 15-7, 97, Sturt, 13 points in it again, and we're about 30 minutes into this third term. What a game of football. Carey against Spiel. He ought to be tied, Spiel. He's just been in there thumping the ball all afternoon. He tapped it out now towards Clark Socks down, siren sound, great quarter, a great quarter of football, both teams, but at the three-quarter time break here at Glenelg Oval, Sturt 15-7, lead the Bays 12-12. Sturt has led all day by three points at quarter time, nine points at half time. And as we go into the final quarter, they've got a 13-point break. Set of bounce. Henwood is back in ruck, but it's Spiel who got it out towards Derrington. Spiel has given them a huge start there. Half forward line, ducking wristing to Lena. Got it over to Underwood. Half forward line, Martin again, 30 metres out. Shoots. Oh, what a start he could have given them. He's booted too. But on that occasion, he was offline and one point only results. 14 points the difference now. Sturt in front. Gibbs wobbles one out to the outer side. Off the hand of Donovan. Here's a go. Martin goes forward again, but once more he's offline. So two points to Jeff Martin in the first 35 seconds of play. They could have been valuable goals, which would have uh, may have set a win up for the double blues. Agreed, David. Gibbs. Doothy. Wilmot had him removed. Now Underwood, here's a chance. A longer kick, a better kick, and it's a goal! Great start by the Blues in the final quarter. Running the Bays off their feet at the moment. His first. 16-9 to the Bays, 12-12. Well, they've had three scoring shots. We've only been going for just over a minute. And this really does look a very good Sturt side today. See, their commitment's been good. Their forward work, excellent. Nine goals to Wilmot, but not only that, good players all around that forward line. Underwood himself has been a valuable player. He's been at his first. Double Blues now, 16-9. Bernal, 12-12. Spiel, what a player. Against Henwood. Henwood's not this one. McDermott played very well. Now Maynard, half forward line, up goes to full forward. Garland getting underneath the ball at the back is copping. Kidney there first, measured his length, trying to get the ball out. Over the top there is Andrew Winter, and the umpire will come in and bounce the ball. A bounce down in the right forward pocket. The Bays need a goal, maybe two or three right now. Garton against Frost. Frost goes for the line. Winter chases it out, and it's a throw in in the right forward pocket. Throw in right forward pocket with Gart on there and Frost carry behind. Garton gets it down, but it's Frost towards the line and once more it's out of play. 16-9 Sturt, 12-12 the Bay. 
21 points the difference. It's been a tremendous game of football. Can the Bays fight back? The question to be answered. The supporters just a little quiet at the moment, fearing the worst. Kidney close to the line. He's got three Sturt players against him. Can't get clear. Glenelg facing two defeats in a row on their home ground, beaten down here by Port Adelaide in the second round of the series. Carey Court, Frost, who's tightened since quarter time against Garten at centre-half forward. In fact, Garten now has been shifted to full forward. So that's full credit to Frost for his performance after a tardy start when Garten dominated. Well, there's a big thump by Carey. McCarthy run down by Ellis Stringer, gets one in the back, and he's got it in the full-back area. Sturt defence playing brilliantly this afternoon. Smith can't keep the ball in play with him. He's Maynard, and it's a throw-in on the half-forward right flank. And uh, Maynard just took exception to something that Smith did. Nothing in it at all. Throw-in. Frost and Carey. Frost tap away. Back towards the line. Smith. The players look as though they're getting a little tired. Then tired they ought to be. It's been a top game of football. Pace to burn. The Bays down by 21 points, and as David told you, staring their second defeat straight on their home ground. The ball goes in towards Copping. Quickly now it is uh, Hall. Hall back. He's got Maynard clear. Gives it to Woodlands. Jack sides. I think he's got it through. Oh, what a brilliant goal. Craig Woodland second. The Bays needed it badly. 13-12. They trail Sturt 16-9. Yes, a brilliant goal by Woodlands. He was tucked in tight on that uh, behind post. Used the check side and somehow managed to thread it through. Well, the base supporters have come to life. 13-12 now. 90 points. The difference is, what, 15. Great game of footy and you're seeing great action on Seven's big lead. Henwood against Spiel at the centre bounce. A good one. Henwood's tap away. Taken there by Craig, lost it, gives it back to Smith. Smothered off the boot beautifully. In goes Hogarth. Hall, back now to Stringer, but Hall comes out for the footy. Maynard is wide. Woodman's wider still. He's got it clear on the half-forward line. Across to Maynard, 25 metres out, 60-degree angle. Shoots, and it's offline for a point. Oh, the Bay stand started to up too early. Maynard can't believe it, but the Bays have got their 12th point on the ball. They all thought it was a goal in this... Uh Stand where we're situated. Almost, the roof almost came off. But Maynard just offline. Kick in. Heads grandstand side. Oh, what a mark. Neil Craig. Got the ride. Craig at half back. Delina gives him a lead. Underwood drifts down. Almost took the mark. Seabone gets clear. Cleverly gives it to McDermott. Flanked by Walsh. Pays into attack. High kick to the square, looking for Garten with him, copping. At the back it was Kavanagh, and he went for the safety of the goals. Knocked it through for a point, but stirred under extreme pressure at the moment, Ian. There's some tall timber up there for the Bays, Peter. Peter, David, they're doing the right thing, though. They're thumping the ball clear, not trying to mark against them. Six minutes gone. Second time Craig has taken the mark from the kick in. On the half-back flank this afternoon, and has done well as he drives the ball towards centre wing. Craig, not Craig, it's Klopp with the ball. Spill was the shepherder. Klopp now kicks to the half-forward line. Getting back on it is Donovan. Has to kick hurriedly. Hooks it back. Darrington up. Stringer. Spill waiting for it. Tapped it to Underwood. Through the corner. Out goes the kick. Beautifully passed. Hogarth with the footy. And he's got it about 35 metres out. This is Paul Hogarth. Booted two, both in the second quarter. And if he gets this one, it's going to be extremely difficult for the Bays to get out of this game. To the northern end, no breeze to speak of. A beautiful autumn afternoon as the ball heads away and he's got goal number three. Sturt doing it brilliantly. 17-9 for the Bays. 13-14, top action on Sevens, big league. A tremendous play again by the Double Blues. It was Andrew Underwood who somehow threaded his, work th his way through that pack, lifted the eyes, saw Hogarth in the open space, found him, and from that, the goal. 17-9, tremendous kicking, tremendous commitment from the Double Blues, and they lead the base 13-14. Spiel against Henwood. 
Spill thump again. Pater. Carey. Garton. Smith. A bounce ball again, almost back in the centre circle. Well, Mackie, top crowd in today to watch this game, and it's one of the best games of football that you could ever see. All the skills of Australian rules game on display here today. Walk, that's indicative of it. The Cray, over to Hogarth it goes, pops one in towards the goal. Coming back, oh, he's got it! I didn't think for a moment he had a chance, but it came back, he's burned it, he's fourth. All the double blues go further ahead. What a great game. Oh, their confidence is soaring now, David. I don't think Benelg is going to get out of this. In fact, uh, they're making a change. It looks like Duthie is coming off. We're going to see David Marshall getting back into the action. But, gee, they've had a lot of stars down. David Marshall hasn't played well. Copping struggled to get into the game. And simply, apart from McDermott, their playmakers haven't been quite good enough in the afternoon. 25 points the difference and that lead much of it can be attributed to that man Frank Spill what a job he's done so is Painter towards half forward Bay's trying to get clear ball held to him says umpire Mackey that player of course was Ross Gibbs great team effort from the double blues have hardly had a passenger Spill worked tirelessly today plenty of players around the ball Spill kicks it off the ground but I think uh, may have kicked a bit of McDermott's ankle in, the, in doing so. And he'll take it at centre-half back. McDermott's kicked to half forward. Searches for Carey. Bit of pushing and shoving. Carey's got it. Frost not happy. Garton on a lead. 15-metre penalty. Craig it was that encroached over the mark. Came from the side. Well, this brings Carey almost to within kicking distance. He's about 55 metres out. He's gone for the big screwy. Oh, he's got the distance okay. And the accuracy. Tremendous kick from Peter Carey. Boots his third. Bay's come tumbling back. 14-14. Sturt 18-9. You're watching great action on Seven's big league. Well, that's a towering torpedo punt. I don't think Supers kicked one as far as that in donkey's ages. But, gee, they needed it. The frustration starting to come out in the, the way that he kicked that ball. But the Bays have been in trouble for forwards all afternoon. As I said, Copping has been struggling. Gardon started off brilliantly, but he couldn't keep it going. Woodlands has been in and out. Tony Hall has taken some brilliant marks, but he's been on the ball as well. Generally speaking, the Sturt defence has been on top, and it shows on the scoreboard. Although it's 28 scoring shots to 27, and yet Sturt lead by 19 points. Spill against Henwood. Henwood went to full back in that third quarter to try and combat Wilma. Hogarth needs help. Oh, tie tackle. Little lucky to get out of it. Dermot not pleased, but Hogarth has it at half back. Goes short to Derrington. Double Blues building up. Wilma on the lead in the pocket. Beautifully put, Jim Derrington. Oh, he's got nine and he's already beaten the record down here for the most number of goals kicked by a Sturt player. That was held at eight before, and now he's shooting for the to equal the all-time amount kicked against Glenelg at the Glenelg Oval. That is ten. Wilmot's got nine. Thumps one in long. It's coming back. He's done it! Oh, tremendous effort. 13 kicks, 10 goals. Match-winning performance. Is it ever, David? That is game, set, and match. I think the Bays have got their tails between their legs at the moment. Sturt playing with great confidence. Derrington's kick to Wilmot on the lead as he got out of the blocks. It was brilliantly put. And Wilmot showing all the confidence of the champion full forward he proved to be last year. 25 points in it now. Spiel gets one forward. Marshall has just come back on. Craig gets it to Delena. The kick into the pocket. Oh, great mark. Max Cruz. He's off. He's caught. Holding the ball. Well, he thought he was clear, but the little bloke came from behind. Paul Hogarth. I think he's a little unlucky, David. That could have just as easily been a push in the back. Well, it's gone the other way in. And Hogarth, who's booted four in a very impressive performance, lines up for what could be the end of any chance that the Bays have. 19-9, Sturt. Hogarth, four. 25 metres out, he's hooked it left. One point. 
Yes, I think when you're hot, you're hot. And are the Blues ever hot this afternoon? After their brilliant final quarter last week against West Adelaide. Well, he's had two kicks. He can't do that twice, or perhaps he can. Yes, he... he yes, he's working on his stats, trying to get his kicks up for the afternoon. Donovan loped over the half-back line. Likewise, the centre line, Derrington bearing down upon him now as the kick goes away towards Copping. Sensible defence by Sturt again. Gets the ball out, all being used as a doormat there, Stringer. Derrington again whips out the long handball. Chasing it out there is uh, Hogarth. That is Michael Hogarth. In turn now, Paul Hogarth. Gee, it's a Hogarth testimonial. Changes tack back on the right leg. Puts out the pass to the half-forward line. And there he finds out there, Walk, who can't take the catch. I think Studley realised that he's a beaten man. His uh, side has not been good enough on the day. 19-10 the double blues. 14-14 the null. We're rapidly approaching the 15-minute mark. Sturt go forward again. All left behind. Here's an opportunity in the pocket. Martin has a shot, but he's well offline. And just one point. 19-11, 14-14. 15 minutes in the final turn. Gee, Martin that could have had a few goals in this last quarter. He's had three points. A couple of them been pretty easy. Gibbs to Stringer. The umpire didn't pay the mark. Stringer's got Marshall well clear. He's going to need Maynard. Derrington can't catch either, but he gave it his best shot as Maynard goes in towards full forward. No crumbs down there for the Bays. It's all Sturt, Smith, McCarthy, Frost, and now Winter. Got it cleverly over to Smith. Off the half-back line. Good pass out towards centre-half forward. Big leap, Martin comes out with a football. No, heads off towards goal. I think that's home. Oh, they can walk on water. That's his third goal, and it wasn't before. That's the end of the penny section. A brilliant victory to Sturt, 2011 to 14 14. A brave statement, 15 minutes into the final quarter. Tremendous action, tremendous football from Martin. He'd booted three points before that one. Came so quickly and cleverly through centre half forward. And uh, what's going on there? It looks as though the Sturt Durano had a bit of a altercation with Salisbury or McDermott, was it? And now he's going back to the bunker and uh, worse for wear, perhaps a little, but it's all the double blues. 2011, the Bays 14 14. Set a bounce. Spiel, Henwood, Hogarth, around the corner, up towards the half forward line. Underwood couldn't. Gibbs, beautifully Shepherd Underwood again. No die leader this time. And he's put it brilliant football his first Sturt on their merry way 21-11 to 14-14 well just turning into a procession now double blues far too good so quick so elusive and their shooting for goal has been absolutely brilliant 21 goals from 32 scoring shots they're well in control of this game and they'll go home great victors here from Brighton Road the umpire just asking the runner, David Stewart, to go off the ground. He's been there too long. Gee, he's done as much work as the players. And have they done plenty? Henwood can't get it out. Woodlands whips out a handball. Tony Hall, 45 metres out. Beautiful goal, Tony Hall. Well set up by Woodlands. Kick number 15, goal number three. The base by fight back, but it's too late. Yes, I fear it is. Although Hall did so very well, he got a beautiful handball, ran through centre half forward, and was never going to miss. Been a very good player, Tony Hall. 16 marks, is it? 17 marks, perhaps. 15 marks, 19 kicks, top performance, but it's all to no avail, I believe. Stirred at 21 11. The Bays are 15 14. Henwood, the spare parts man, started in ruck, then went to full back. Now he's against the fellow who's given Sturt a big start. Spill backhands it. They can't get that one out. And the umpire will come in and bounce the ball. 21-11 to 15-14. Getting through the pack was Hall. That's holding the ball. He's a little stiff. Didn't have a big chance. He had nowhere to go out of the pack. But the free kick will go to the socks down Robert Klopp. Klopp goes wide. All player, normal. 
Picked up by War, goes short to Wilma. Got it. Is this going to be the record? He's already booted 10. That equaled the all-time record for goals kicked by the opposition against Glenelg at Glenelg. And now a great chance here from just, oh, no more than 15 metres out. Wilmot kicks and creates history. Goal number 11. You won't see any better performances than that by Ian Wilmot today. Down in confidence before the game started. What a performance. Is it ever? Well, as you said, down of confidence, I think this takes care of all that. Two goals in the previous two games, including none last week. And all of a sudden he comes out and boots 11. Well, he booted more than 100 last year. A talented player. But today the third players upfield have looked for him. He's led well, he's marked brilliantly, and he's kicked just as brilliantly. 22 goals, 11. Sturt, 15, 14, Glenelg. From the bounce, Salisbury left it behind. Derrington, being ferocious on his attack at the ball, can't get clear on this occasion. And umpire Campbell will bounce. So the double blues have been just too good. They've let it every change. It was very tight till three-quarter time, but they've just burst through the Glenelg defence in this last quarter. Players at the fall of the ball, as they have at the moment, but on this occasion, they can't get it clear. 39 points is their lead. We're about 19 minutes into the term. Take a miracle for the Bays to get back from here. They're just not good enough on the day. Glenelg uh, under pressure here again as... Winter tries to get clear, does so now, gives it to Michael Hogar. Back into the pocket it goes, there's been an FAD and it's going, guess who? Ian Wilmot's got it. And he'll kick from about 40 metres out for goal number 12. Superlatives not enough to explain the performance by Wilmot. Look at that. Tremendous kick, it's drifting across the face of goal, however, just offline for a point. And they've done it all without Todd Finey, who's been one of their top playmakers in recent weeks. He pulled out before the game started, we believe, with tonsillitis, although we haven't confirmed that. Seabone cruises at centre wing. It's the way the ball will go. Woodland should get it next. The long hand ball goes out. Painter bearing down on that play. He's been a fine performer. Stringer to Maynard. And that's a mark in the left forward pocket. Maynard thought about playing on, but his angle was almost impossible. Kick 20, Peter Maynard. It's a high one. The umpire said that that's just offline for a point. And the base struggling. 15-15 to 22-12, but superb kicking by the Blues. 20 minutes gone in the third, in the final quarter. Remember, let's cast our mind back here to that Escort Cup game when the Double Blues led by 10 goals, I believe it was, at three-quarter time and got mown down. Well, they've certainly got their revenge here today. Marshall takes it to centre wing. Probably as quiet as I've ever seen David Marshall. Taken from the ground during the third quarter. Frost fist clear. Maynard caught. Good tackle, Derrington. The attempt was made to get rid of the ball, and that's what the law says. If you make an attempt, you can't be penalised. Set a half forward. Spiel, what a job he's done. Likewise, Painter puts it out wide in front of Walk. Can't complete the mark. Martin there to assist. Martin does well, but the umpire's seen a free before that. I think Klopp was the offender. And uh, the recipient will be Mark Donovan. Donovan from the half-back line. High kick towards Carey. Three on one. Good, good mark, Smith. Darrell Smith from half back line to Winter. He's up centre field at the moment. Don't know who's gone into the back pocket, but Andrew Winter will transfer play to Spiel. The big fellow too tall for McDermott there, and he'll put them into attack. Plus 15 metres. The slap was there. 22 minutes gone, and Frank Spiel, well, what a wonderful performer. Wilmot wanted it in short, but big Frank's going for goal. Hasn't booted one yet. Not going to make it with this one either. Right up towards full forward. Off the back of the pack. It was Seabone. Got it to Walsh. Walsh on the left leg. Goes in short. Salisbury against Hogarth. Hogarth, Salisbury, Walsh. 
Vacant ball. No, it's well taken on the outer side by Johnny Painter. You think he's out of dough? Kick number 24 coming up. Powerful performance by Painter. That kick not well directed, and that's unusual. Seabone has it. He changes tack, comes grandstand side to Kidney. On it goes to Cruz. Cruz searches for McDermott. Well placed. McDermott covered by Andrew Winter, who looks remarkably like John Murphy, the former Sturt champion. The kick to half forward. Chance for Copping. Walking goal for Marshall. In he goes. Pops it through. Goal number two. Only kick number seven for David Marshall. 16-15 the Bays. 22-12 double blue. Marshall has been averaging 21 disposals a match. Well, he's had six kicks and seven handballs, and some of those kicks, most of them, have been in the last five minutes of the game. Middle, he's been on the interchange bench, but on that occasion, he got it from Copping, who's also had a quiet day, and I can't believe that he's not still worrying about his leg. But the Bay's comprehensively beaten. 33 points the difference. Almost to the 25-minute mark of the quarter. Smith goes forward. Gee, he's worked hard too. Well, Donovan cops a heavy one. Underwood late on the scene, but he's uh, he's okay. Donovan goes high. Carey with him frost. Carey, good judgment. Twists and turns, wanting somebody to come past him, but forced to kick. Kicks badly. Atrociously, in fact. Hogarth. Kavanagh. No, it was McCarthy. Gave it to Frost. Wobbles one towards half forward. Martin couldn't handle it. Getting across Underwood shows good pace, good skills. No one to support him. Seabone, robbed by Klomp, pushes it on cleverly. This number 12 coming up. Yes, he's got it. Oh, what a performance. Ian Wilmot, goal number 12, scintillating football. 23-12 for Double Blues. Glenelg 16-15. You're watching great action on Seven's Big League. How important is the strength of Robert Klopp to start at centre-half forward? He's had the experience of VFL football. He's always had the strength. He never takes a corner when he can take a straight line. On that occasion, it was straight at the ball. Got the handball over to Wilmot. He said thank you and kicked yet another one. 23-12 to 16-15. Spiel now against Henwood. Henwood takes it, not forward. Derrington left it behind. Smith again getting them out of the middle. Martin. Oh, the double blues can do no wrong. Martin goes short, looking for Painter, and he's got it. Left unattended at half forward. Steady's boots another one. Yes, he has. John Painter, great performance. Goal number two for him. And the double blues career miles ahead now. 24 goals, 12 it is. Linnell, 16-15. Oh, tremendous performance by Painter. Sturt making a change. Filky's on. David Walkoff. Been a complete team effort by the Double Blues. Tremendous football. And uh, what a great fight back after two losses early in the season. At the bounce, it's Henwood. Woodland's the opportunity. McDermott, who hasn't stopped trying, bangs one long into the square. Garden was on a lead, but McCarthy should take it. Right on the very last line of defence. McCarthy goes out wide. Big leap from behind by Salisbury. On the bottom, Hogarth. With him was Kavanagh. But the ball has gone out of play. 111, Glenelg. 156, Sturt. And that's the reason why some of these Bay supporters are leaving. We're into time on. No chance of a Bay victory. Copping in front of Kavanagh on this occasion. But by golly, that lad's done a great job on Copping today. Perhaps suffering from an injury. Appeared to be limping in the second quarter and was taken from the ground. Copping, who hasn't kicked the goal, puts one on its way. Now he has. Third of his first. 17-15, the Bays. 24-12, double blues. It's going to be a Sturt victory. So Copping boots his first. He's been averaging something over three and a half, about 3.6 goals per match. Double Blues make another change. They know they've got the game won. David I comes onto the ground. And it's been a great performance by the Double Blues here at the Glenelg Oval. And strangely enough, Glenelg, and the two times that they've played here at home, have been beaten. Port did it, and now Sturt. 
So 24-12 the Blues, 17-15 the Bays. We're into time on by three minutes. Sturt go forward, Derrington chips out a pass and finds Paul Hogarth. Hogarth gets a shove in the back from Gibbs, but forgets about that and then goes short to Derrington. Walmart looking for a lead. Derrington chips in short. Is it Smith? It is. And his work rate has been tremendous here today. 16th kick to Smith, and they're playing keepings off at the moment as Derrington dribbles down from the wing. They've only moved it about 30 metres, and uh, they must be feeling very content with themselves at the moment. Derrington taking, a, taking an eternity with this kick. Wilmot lurking in the square. He's booted 12. The kick heads in Wilmot direction. Cruz, better judgment. Wilmot went up one-handed. Perhaps struggling to get both in the air because he really has been a very fine player and what a great marker of the ball today. McDermott, Bose McDermott off. He's going to be run down. No, gets a handball on the carry. Bays into attack. Carey puts it into the pocket. Looking for Woodlands. Should find him. Good lead and a good mark from Craig Woodlands. Now he's got it about 35 metres out. The angle, as you can see, is going to be acute. He's tucked in tight on that boundary line. Woodlands uses a drop punt. He's booted two. Is that his third? I think he might have got it. Oh, good football from Craig Williams. Three to him. 18-15, the Bays. But Sturt, well in command, 24-12. So 33 points in front, the double blues have well and truly got this one wrapped up. McDermott, Alan Stringer runs himself back into trouble, finally gives it off to Seabone, he kicks forward, Hall against Craig, both have been good players, Tony Hall sensational during that third quarter, good play again, the ball has been hooked back towards half forward, Kerry, Hall paid at the second attempt, and Big Super who we saw Torpedo punt one through from about the same distance earlier in the quarter. Has the chance now to boot his fourth. Elected to go with the screw punt again. I think he's done a repeat performance. He has. Oh, he knows how to kick those all right. Four to carry. Great performance. 2015, the Bays. Sturt 24-12. So in the dying moments of the game, the Bays have whittled the lead down to 27 points. They're into attack once more. Winter appeared to get a trip. Kidney gives it to Marshall. Oh, clever handball. Woodlands from 35 metres out. Goal number 20. Well done by the Bays. Kick number nine to Woodlands. It came from as a result of a beautiful handball from Marshall. And Woodlands has booted his fourth. And the Bays, 2015, get closer to Sturt at 24-12. This, incidentally, is the highest losing score by the Bays against Sturt. 20 goals, 15 is normally good enough to win a game of footy. Not so today. <laughs> 21 points to difference. The Bays are rallying, but it's too late, I'm afraid. We've already had six minutes of time on. Henwood against Spill, or Smith in the action again. Gives it to Derrington, the kick looks for Wilmot, but Cruz, oh, great mark from behind. Cruz comes out grandstand side, Maynard appeared to infringe, but no free kick. Smith puts it on the ground, held without possession. Those Glogs, the old supporters that are still left, not at all happy with that. Darrell Smith has it at centre wing. The kick into the pocket, Ross Gibbs is at the back. Good mark, has done so. Gibbs now has Marshall loose. Most players just jogging on the spot at the moment. They're very tired. Been a crackerjack game of football. Tremendous pace. 
Oh, oh you just come onto the ground, got a heavy knock. Darrington, as ever, at the bottom of the pack. Umpire Mackey will bounce at centre wing. 24-12 the double blues, 20-15 the bays. Spiel against Henwood. Henwood took it out of the air, but he's kicked and smothered by Darrington. Smith goes short to Painter, puts it over the top. Here's a go for Underwood. Half forward flank on that left foot of his, puts one in towards the goals. It's drifting away. And Max Cruz takes the relieving mark. McDermott changes tack, goes out looking for Alan Stringer. Cle cleverly gets it to Salisbury, but he's in trouble. Seabone into the open spaces. Craig against Hall. Craig can't get it clear, now does. Oh, and the umpire indicating that he threw it. Fairly difficult to pick up from our angle whether it in fact was a throw or not. The umpire had no hesitation in playing it. Stringer sets it up for Hall, in fact, set him up. Hall cleverly gets around, puts it towards half forward, Marshall, now Woodlands. Players stack up, kidney at the bottom, bounce. Very close to siren time. 21 points the difference. Glenelg have kicked eight goals in this last quarter, and Sturt have kicked nine, so we've had a 17-goal term. Tremendous performance. Frost. Nobody to kick to. It goes for the safety of the line, and it's wobbling close. In fact, will it go out? No, it hasn't. Now it does. Seabone and Frost, and Seabone and Reed rather. We're late on the scene. So no uh, plenty of understanding why this quarter is going so long with 17 goals having been kicked. Underwood robbed by Kidney back to Underwood. Now Filky, there's the siren. It's all over. Tremendous performance by Sturt. What a great effort. They've won the game 24-12, 156 to Glenelg, 2015, 135.